hi everyone thanks so much for tuning in today this is Kathy and today I'm going to be using my Cricut to create this cute little card featuring the sweet holiday penguins by my favorite things and I kind of just jumped right into it so what you're seeing is the Cricut design space screen and what I did was I just chose shapes to add to my map there. Then I went up to the top and I clicked on the little lock to unlock the dimensions. And I resized it to be five and a quarter by four inches. And then I went in and I changed the color. Um, I wanted to add a text box because I really like the look of inlaid dies but I don't have very many word dies and I don't have any alphabet dies. So I thought that I would just use my Cricut to do what I wanted to do. So I chose a pretty bold font and then I moved it up into what will be um, sort of a card front. It's a little bit smaller because I do like to do some matting. And I just kind of moved it around and resized it to make sure that um, the penguin would be in the center there in place of the O in the word joy. And I did, again, I wanted them kind of big, kind of bold. And what I did here was I ungrouped the letters so that I could check the size of the O because I had measured the pump, the, the pumpkin. I measured the penguin. I guess I'm still thinking about Halloween. I measured the penguin and he's about one and a half by one and three quarter inches. So I wanted to have the O sort of around that size so that I there wouldn't be too much space in between the J, the Y, and the little penguin. Once I was happy with the sizing, which here I decided I needed to have it just a little bit bigger, and then you'll see that I kind of adjust it just to kind of get it a little bit more centered into where I want to have it cut out. Once I got the sizing right, I go in, I did ungroup the letters again, and that's important to do. And then I delete the O because I don't need the O to be cut out. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to duplicate the J and the Y to make sure that they're the right size because those are gonna be cut out in patterned paper. What I will be cutting out of with this here is all, it's gonna be cut out of a piece of 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock. So what I did there was I just kind of adjusted the letters on where I wanted them to be. I wanted the J and the Y to be just a little bit closer together. Then I selected the J and the Y and I made sure to hit the align button and align the bottom to make sure that they were even across the bottom there. Now before sending it to the machine to be cut, one thing you have to do is you have to attach all of them, which is what I just did there. I selected the J, the Y, and the card panel. Then I went down to the bottom and clicked on attach. What that's going to do is it's going to actually cut the J and the Y out of the white cardstock. And that just saved time so that I didn't have to switch mats. I just changed the color of the other J and the Y, and I just placed my patterned paper down where the where I'm moving the J and the Y on the on the mat there. One thing I really like about design space is you can move stuff around on the mat. So I was able to put a half a sheet of cardstock up at the top there to get my card panel with the J and the Y cut out. And then I was able to put a piece of patterned paper below that to get the J and the Y cut out of the patterned paper. After I had it cut out, I placed it into my stamp positioner and put that cute little penguin guy right in the center of the J and the Y. And I will be stamping him in Memento Tuxedo Black ink because it is Copic friendly. And of course, there's going to be some Copic coloring going on. After I had him stamped down, I just pretty much jumped right into the coloring. This image was really easy to color um, because there's some pretty small spots there. I wasn't too worried about too much blending. I just wanted to make sure that I had some really dark areas around his little arms so that there would be some depth and dimension on his little body. 
So I started with BV29 and just very little of the BV29 just to get the darkest areas where I wanted them. And I have started to, when coloring, I've started actually beginning with my darkest shade. Um, I've found that I've gotten a little bit better at controlling myself about not putting too much down. Um, and that takes some practice. So if you're more comfortable mapping out your shaded areas with your lightest color first, um, that's fine too. There's, I can't say that there's a right or a wrong way to do this. Whatever works best for you. The second color that I went in with is BV25. And I just added quite a bit of that color there. I left small little spots there for my lightest color, which is BV23. Now, one thing that I am still guilty of when using my Copics is not allowing enough time for the ink to kind of settle in. And the BV23 does pull up a lot of darker colors quite a bit. Um, but I made myself put that marker down and I left the ink alone so that it could settle in. And I'm glad that I did because it ended up settling quite nicely. For the wreath, I went in with G09. I'm not really coloring at all. I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit over the little pine needles of the wreath. And then I went in for the holly berries with our R29. That, and again, not even coloring. I just did little dots there. For his little beak and his feet, I started with YR15 and decided that I wanted to add a little bit of shading. So after I was done with that, I did YR18 just to add a little bit of darkness on the outer edges of his beak and then um, on the top of his little feet, like right underneath his little body there. Then I went back in with the YR15 just to blend it in a tiny little bit. And then it was time to move on to his little scarf there. Again, this is very simple Copic coloring. Um, spaces are pretty small, so I wasn't too worried about blending um, and trying to get a whole lot of blending, especially in the smaller areas. So I just did every other stripe with YG01. And then I went in with BG13 to fill in the other stripes on his little scarf. And after I was done with coloring his scarf, I decided that I kind of needed to give him a ground to stand on because he was just kind of floating. So I started with BG quadruple zero. And before I go in and do the ground, I actually add a little bit of shading on the sides of his faces with the BG zero, BG quadruple zero. It just adds a little bit of color, a little bit of shading, but it's not so stark like it would be if I had used a, a gray, which is what I normally would use for shadows. I use the same color just to add the ground beneath him. And then I decided that that was a little bit too light. So I do come in with a C1 just to give a more prominent line underneath his little feet where he's standing. And then just to ease up that line a little bit, I go back in with the BG quadruple zero and blend that out. Once I am done with the coloring, I decided that, um, to place the letters in there to see if I liked it because I wasn't too sure about the black and white polka dot paper. And then I decided that, yes, I did like it, but then I thought it needed a background. So I cut out a quick mask for the penguin and the background stamp that I'm using is actually called the Christmas background. It is also by my favorite things and I am inking it up with their snow cone hybrid ink. This is the first time that I've used inks from, my favorite things and they are really really nice inks so I'll probably be buying the full size ink pads quite soon. I placed my stamped panel face down onto that and took a piece of scratch paper and rubbed it really well to make sure that the ink transferred over to my stamped panel and here tweezers slip oh but luckily that ink was so light that 
it didn't jump or anything over my background. And in the video, you can barely see it. Even in person, it's very light. That's what I really liked about that snow cone color. Um, but it did add just a little bit to that background. The words are barely there. And then just to add a little bit more color to the edges, I ran the ink pad just along directly to the edges. After I was done with that, I think I play around with the letters again because I'm still not sure if I like the black and white polka dot, especially because I knew that I was going to put it onto a red panel. And the red panel measures four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Um, I kind of wanted this to be a one layer ish card. Um, let's be honest, I like layers, so it's really hard for me to do just a one layer card. And once I placed that down on the red cardstock, I thought, well, that kind of looks cute with just the red. So I couldn't decide, and I kind of go back and forth. You'll see I put the letters in, and then I take one letter out to see which I like better. And I think, well, I don't know. I think I like the polka dots. When I had both of them in, I thought, yes, I do like the black and white polka dots, which, by the way, that is also from my favorite things. It's from the basics, the black and white basics. So I set those aside so I can think about it while I finish up the card and just adhere this panel down to an A2 size white note card. Um, that is also the 80 pound Nina card stuck there. And once I put it down and I see the red border and I see the red letters, I think I do really like that, but I really like the polka dot. So here I am deciding polka dot or red, polka dot, or red polka dot or red <laughs> and I finally decide you know I'm just gonna do the polka dots because that was the reason that I had cut the letters out of the white was again to do the smooth one layer ish card and I wanted it to I wanted the letters to be flush with the penguin and since I don't have the dies for the penguins that is essentially what made up my mind right there so I glued those letters in there and that pretty much finished up the card. Um, as an afterthought, when I was looking, I thought I could use a couple of sequins. So I added some of those in there. And that is the first card for my holiday series. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here are a couple links to another, another video or two for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And we'll see, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching.